They are the great railway stations of the world. The biggest, the busiest, the liveliest. Standing still is not a good option. <laughs> You're gonna get knocked down. There is a big uh, fight. From New York's Penn Station and the epic Grand Central. As soon as they come into this space, I always hear people exclaim, oh my gosh, look at that. To Calcutta's heaving Howrah Terminal. The trains are crammed full. Some people are hanging out of it, some people are squeezing into it. Melbourne's iconic but overstretched Flinders Street. This week was going to be the first week back when they could have a train all the way from home to Flinders Street. And what are we, Monday night? Peak hour, and we're back to the buses. And the super efficient 26 platformed Zurich's Hauptbahnhof, where everything and everyone is at the mercy of the clock. I see the time. My mind tells me, man, go the next train. For some, it's the gateway to a journey of a lifetime. For others, a one-way ticket to the daily frustrations of rail travel. To follow the next schedule, I'm tired of missing my connection. With some familiar problems... It's the leaves. Cause the train to slide upon braking. And new ones, too. You definitely do get kangaroos on the track, but they're lightning fast. And hopped on, hopped over and hopped off. It's round the clock and non-stop. So far, so good. <laughs> but the day is young. It's early morning in New York City. A Manhattan, the world's most famous and expensive piece of real estate, is about to double its population as a million and a half commuters head in through the two great transport hubs that dominate New York's network. On Manhattan's west side, the enormous Pennsylvania station, Penn for short, the busiest railroad station in North America. And just 10 blocks away on the east side, the world's most iconic station, Grand Central Terminal. It's a kind of a place where everyone walks in and as soon as they come into this space, I always hear people exclaim, oh my gosh, look at that. I think it's the scale, this perfect proportion in the marble, the ceiling, in the incredible windows that are both ends of the terminal. It is kind of a great temple of transportation. You really do have the feeling that you're walking into a cathedral or this incredible gateway uh, to transport you to another place. This is the terminal for over a quarter of a million commuters coming in from Connecticut and New York suburbs. Good morning, how are you? On duty oh, outside is taxi dispatcher Jesse Batts, and he's doing what he can to make the morning commute that little bit smoother. Sometimes you have to have a smile. New Yorkers is in a hurry, and sometimes they, the way they are, you know, and sometimes a smile goes a long way. How you doing, partner? Everything good? All right. You must have made a lot of money, because you smile it. Across town at Penn, New York's other major transport hub, they handle commuters from New Jersey and Long Island, as well as long-distance travelers from Washington, Chicago, New Orleans and Miami. What's up? Penn terminal manager Steve Tarasiano helps keep it all running. There is a unique dynamic here at Penn Station. We are one of the largest uh, transportation hubs in the country, if not the world. About 750,000 people a day traverse this building. We have three major carriers coming in here. We have six subway lines. It takes a coordinated effort every day. Just dealing with the public every day is an adventure. Getting ready for this morning's adventure is customer ambassador Ashley Lynn. Thank you. I'm trying to get my train. All right. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> but <laughs> I'm trying to find out if you let me. Okay. All right. New Yorkers are really tough. We're fast paced. We know what we want. We know what we need to do, and we go when we do it. Nine miles down the line is Penn's major feeder station, the Long Island Railroad's transport hub in Jamaica, Queens. Every day, 300,000 city workers travel through or change trains here on their way to Brooklyn or Manhattan. And here too, station manager Pat Gerakaris is getting ready for the morning rush. The peak rush hour starts here at 6 a.m., but we really start to pick up uh, with customer uh, traffic here around 7 a.m. Services on its 10 branch lines and 500 miles of track need to be carefully synchronized. Hey, Chris, the Atlantic Terminal, is it on two or three next? Track three? So when the doors open here, you can, uh, is he able to pass through? Our customers are counting on us to keep the wheels turning and get them into the city on time, stay to that schedule, and we're doing whatever we can. There's a whole bunch of people working behind the scenes to make that happen. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Kew Garden Station will be next. Only the first six cars are platform. Any cousins in the rear four cars, please walk up if you wish to exit. Conductor Kenneth Jordan has been getting people into the city from Long Island for the past 15 yes. years. It took years to get ready to balance, to do this balancing act. You gotta be like a juggler. <laughs> I'm good, how about you, good? Oh, tickets please, oh, tickets. With 640 daily trains, tickets. it's the USA's busiest commuter service. Constantly, busy, always on the go. 2018 or an 18. At Penn Station Control, okay. keeping a close eye on Kenneth's train and the rest of the rush hour service is Assistant Station Master Michael Dougherty. Pretty much we monitor the trains as they're leaving Jamaica to Kew Gardens, Forest Hills, everything west into Penn Station. Here's your round trip back, thank you. I'm an action guy, I like the action, but it could be high stress in here, you know? A lot of phones ringing, a lot of things going on. Um, so you have to stay focused. This is the train to Penn Station. Watch your step, watch your step. Yeah, you need some help? No, I just need to turn around. A lot of people. <laughs> Penn Station, watch your step. More than 150,000 people are now arriving at Penn Station. Rush hour is in full flow. With 21 tracks, seven tunnels, and three concourses on three levels, Penn is essentially a small town in the heart of the city. What's going on, fellas? Manager Steve thrives on the energy of the place. There's a lot that goes into the running of this place. I mean, just the sheer volume of people, everything really has to work as a well-oiled machine, and it's the coordination between the different groups, the different departments, that makes this place run. Helping oil the pen machine is the West Side Yard, a 26-acre depot in the heart of Manhattan, where trains are cleaned and maintained before going back into service. It's very hot. Trains are coming in and out every 10, 15 minutes. These trains are packed, you know what I mean? Like, stay in the room only. So you know how the trains have to be clean, and they have to be right, and they have to smell good, because the people are getting on them. And if it's 100 people in one car, it's a little tight. Like the trains, the cleaners, known as car appearance maintainers, are on a tight schedule and need to make sure nothing is left behind. Definitely plenty of pizza boxes and beer bottles and coffee cups. One good thing is it used to be a lot more newspapers, but now with uh, everybody reading in their phones, there's less newspapers. On the concourse, the rush hour rhythm is picking up. Yes, Fridays, you want to go straight up these stairs and it's going to be to your left. You have to be fast-paced, upbeat, you have to be ready to go and you have to know what you want to do. Did you need some help? So to get your ticket, you're going to go up these stairs right here on your left. We're just all about communication, communication, communication. Thank you. You have a good day. So that's what we do. So far, the rush hour service is running smoothly, 
But Steve Tarassiano not only has to get through morning peak, he also has to manage New York's staggering Friday night commute. So far, so good. <laughs> so far, so good, but the day is young. It's 9 a.m. at Grand Central Terminal in Midtown Manhattan. The morning rush hour is still underway as over a quarter of a million people pass through on the daily commute. Located on 42nd Street and Park Avenue, Grand Central was opened in 1913 to transport growing numbers of workers into the fast expanding and vibrant city. But there's always been more to the station than getting commuters in and out on time. Often you come to Grand Central and you see people that you know. It happens all the time, because this, this is really for New York. It's public square. It's the place where everyone comes and crosses. In the bowels of the station, the terminal's world-famous oyster bar is setting up for the day. We get everything businessmen, commuters that are coming in from Connecticut or Westchester or Long Island to the city, tourists who come from Europe, Asia, South America. They love seafood. A little early in the day, but what the hell? There's intense activity upstairs, too. Grand Central is a major symbol of New York City and is permanently on high alert. Transport police officer Ali Schmidt and her partner Mac are on duty this morning. He's constantly working. He's a two-year-old German Shepherd with tons of energy. See right now, he's watching everyone as they pass by. And People go to work every day throughout this terminal, and we want to make sure that our commuters know that they're safe here. Stay. And outside Grand Central, taxi dispatcher Jesse Batts is keeping tabs on some of the city's 13,000 rush hour yellow cabs. Now, you see, we just got four more cars now. This is where the clicker come in. This is the clicker. Don't forget the clicker take a number, and then they total it up for the entire day. And it's in the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Now I'm gonna see you. We're all set, they're coming. Have a good day. They're still coming too at the Long Island Railroad commuter hub, Jamaica Station. At Jamaica's dispatch control, they synchronize 640 daily trains along 10 branch lines to a tight timetable. So many tracks and so many trains can fit on those tracks at certain times, so. It's a domino effect. One late train can take down 10 in a row until we catch up. We do our best. But for some New Yorkers this morning, best is not enough. Local train of Brooklyn is now boarding on track four, and station only track five. There's been a last minute timetable change, and customer usher Nathan Douglas is now in the firing line. It's quite a pressurized job, I mean, you know. It can get pretty hectic. To follow the damn schedule, I'm tired of missing my connection. I'm sorry, miss. Where are you heading? All I can do is apologize, miss. Uh, I'm very sorry. You just have to let them vent. They don't like to see their train leaving when the connect connecting train is coming in. So I can understand where the lady's coming from. Down the line at Penn, staff also have to keep their cool during the rush hour. We do get a lot of commuters that come to the window with their own individual problems that you have to um, 
kind of help out. So um, a lot of patience <laughs> and a smile. <laughs> a lot of patience and a smile. You'll get on the back, right, get on the Babylon change in Jamaica for Hempstead. Okay, track 20. Track 20, go now. Thank you. Thanks. On the concourse, terminal manager Steve Tarassiano is keeping an eye on passenger flow. There's a lot of traffic, a lot of activity here through the day. Again, morning rush hour, evening rush hour are our peak times. So that's when, you know, that's when push comes to shove here. You can see how many people are moving around. We have a lot going on, and it's just a matter of keeping them moving, keeping it safe, and not impeding their flow so they can get to work. And to keep passengers moving, they need to keep Penn's trains moving. Fifteen miles east of Penn is the Long Island Railroad's Hillside Train Depot. You can hear the electric traction motors drawing power. And this morning, General Manager Brad Jenkins is dealing with an all too familiar rail problem. Leaves on the line. As the fall comes and the leaves start to fall off the trees, the oil comes out and transfers to the rail, the slippery rail conditions um, cause the train to slide upon braking. It's like driving your car on snow and ice. And falling foliage can cause a surprising amount of wheel damage. Right here, you have a, a shelling, a, a small shelling and a small flat spot, about a one inch flat spot. The flat spots make noise, they pound the train, it's bad for the infrastructure, it, it damages the rail, it damages the rail car. Each repair has a strict schedule and they need to get this train back in service. We have timetables that are, are tight because we're trying to make sure we get enough trains to get our passengers into the city, home at night. It causes us to really, really work as hard as we can to keep up so we have enough cars in service for our customers. Penn Station, can I help you? Tom, Michael, how are you? Back at Penn Station Control. 1919, leave it there with the doors open. Michael Dougherty has hit a problem. Can you confirm your run number today, please? with a train that's already out on track. Roger, Long Island, 2315, run 86. Thanks for your help today, guys. It's ready to leave the platform, but it lacks a crew. This crew that operates this train normally has another train to do, so I have to make sure that that train is covered. And he's not sure where the replacement team is. I'm sure I'll get a phone call later of the whereabouts of that crew, but I just want to make sure that I have all my ducks in a row. It's going to be tight. And in the meantime, he has to stay on top of the trains that are running. Raymond 48. Yes, track 17, please. 1105 train to Babylon is now boarding on track 17, stopping at Woodside. Jamaica, St. Albans, Rockville, Center, Baldwin, Freeport, Merrick, Belmore, Wontor, Seaford, Massapequa, Massapequa Park, Amityville, Copeg, Lindenhurst, Babylon. In the rush hour, we move about 130 trains. Change at Jamaica for the train to Hempstead. And you're sharing the space with New Jersey Transit, and you're sharing the space with Amtrak. So you're, you all got to be in touch with each other. You all got to be in sync. Ten blocks away at Grand Central, there's a much bigger challenge going on, 40 metres below the station concourse. Judith Kunoff has been involved with it all for the past three years. The construction of a brand new $11 billion rail terminal. Hello. It will allow Long Island passengers not only to come into Penn on Manhattan's west side, but also here into Grand Central on the east side. You see in that door, that's the access to east side. East that's, side access. That's east side access. So the, seriously, the $11 billion job is going on behind those doors, yes. So this is the entrance to the site, and we can hear all the Metro North um, announcements above us. 
Directly above us, we have active trains, active Metro North trains. We're probably standing below tracks 41 and 42. And this is what Manhattan really looks like underneath all the skyscrapers. Manhattan is uh, built on uh, rock. And um, we New Yorkers, most of us taking geology class and everything, we, the one thing that we walk away with is Manhattan is built on schist. So if you turn around, that's the schist. And so when we did the drilling and blasting of the cavern, which we'll get to below, that's what we were drilling and blasting through. The slate-like rock schist is built up of multiple layers of minerals. It's an ideal bedrock for the city's gigantic high rises. That's our schist. We're very proud of it. The terminal will run as far as 52nd Street, or beneath east side Manhattan. So we are going to go from the south and work our way north. From the south, 42nd Street. This is 44th, so we've now walked from 42nd to 44th. And we'll turn off at about 48th Street. this very, very large girder. A series of girders like this needed, needed to have been installed to pick up the load of an active live roadway. Where between Madison Avenue and Park Avenue, this is 48th Street above us. It is a three lane road. So all of that load needed to be transferred to these girders. With life continuing unaffected above ground, New Yorkers are also oblivious to the work taking place even further underground. The escalators are going in here. The new terminal is on three levels, extending up to 50 metres below ground. But for the moment, the only way down is rough and ready. Back at Penn Station, terminal manager Steve Terraciano is almost through the morning commute. How are we doing, guys? But he's already thinking ahead to the evening peak. So we got a lot of problems, my friend. A lot of problem, like we're good by three o'clock kind of problem, or a lot of problem like this is going to be a big staircase for a couple of days. Probably yeah. staircase for a couple of days. Yeah. Wonderful. Yes, beautiful. Right? All right. Closing the staircase. It may be simple in a whole scheme of things. At Penn Station, when you've got. 100,000 people trying to traverse the station, that one staircase becomes very important. A Grand Central, they also have the evening peak on their minds. Security is a major priority. Yes, good boy. And with over a quarter of a million commuters about to pass back through the station, Mac is all ears. Eyes. He is checking bags as we walk past people. And nose. Heel. Mac is highly trained to sniff out suspicious objects and some harmless ones too. Sit. When we walk into a pizzeria, we smell pizza. When they walk into a pizzeria, they smell the sauce, the pepperoni, the salt and pepper, the dough. If he didn't have the nose he did, he'd be out of a job. Come on. Deep below Grand Central. <laughs> I'm just too weak. Judith is now 50 meters below ground. So this is the shaft that we just went down. This is shaft five, OK? She has reached the lower level of the new terminal. It's definitely taking shape. We have two caverns, an east and a west. If you were to take the Chrysler building and lie her down on her side, she would have fit within each, you know, each one of the caverns. So it's over a thousand foot long. And to build the terminal is very much like building a ship within a bottle. All of the material comes in through Queens. It's brought in through the tunnels to the cavern. So very much like, you know, wine bottle with the neck. All of that material comes in through that neck and into the cavern to be built very much like a ship within a bottle. And that's pretty much what you're seeing here now. A 
Above ground at the depot, they're repairing the train wheels damaged by leaves on the line. It needs to be back in service for Penn's Friday night peak. Nick Jingola operates a massive milling machine that chips away layers of metal to make the wheel rim smooth again. It's just made to the profile of the wheel, so it, it, it makes the wheel back to factory specs. We generally cut five to six axles a day, depending on how bad the defects are and how much metal has to be removed. But the repair is taking longer than expected. That other wheel, the number one, had rolling contact feet on the far side. The little cracks all the way around, it took four passes to get them all out. This wheel won't go on the machine again. There's a limit to how many times you can cut a wheel. You cut the wheel, you reduce the life. Once he's down in the shop to an inch and a sixteenth on the thickness of that rim, if it's below that, we have to change the wheels. All these wheels are ready to roll. But there's still one more tricky and dangerous job. At Grand Central, Judith is going even further underground. She's now reached the lowest level of the east side access. The newly dug train tunnel running from Long Island under the East River and into the new Manhattan terminal where it splits into several tracks. If we turn around behind us where we came from, this is one of those splits where we're breaking up into two. We were on the lower level. Above us is another two tracks. It will take another three years before the terminal, deep underground central, is open to passengers. Once Eastside Access is built, Long Island Railroad can take 50% of the capacity, ultimately, and bring them to the other side of Manhattan. Back at the depot for Long Island trains to Penn, the train, damaged by leaves on the line, is now almost ready to return into service. But there's one last vital task. This is the third rail contact shoe. The height of that shoe is critical because it's what connects with the third rail to power the train. As we true the wheels, the height of that shoe will drop. If you cut enough off the wheel and don't adjust that contact point, you could tip over your third rail and cause a lot of infrastructure problems. Now they have to carefully recharge the train with 750 volts of electricity. That's the last stage. Our, our work is done. The train's going back in service. But at Penn Station, the hard work is just starting. They're expecting a trickier rusher than usual. There's an important ice hockey game at Madison Square Garden. And the famous arena sits right on top of the station. When you have the sporting events going on, you've got a lot of cross commuting. It's masses of people coming through here. Change at Jamaica for the air Jam Deck. Now boarding track 17. And announcer Raymond will have a front row seat. Have you ever seen The Lion King? You know the scene when Simba is in the canyon and all the wildebeest come rushing down? That's what happens when they announce your track number at Penn Station. It's the calm before the storm of the evening rush hour at Grand Central. And Manhattan's fast-paced New Yorkers are taking a breather at the station's oyster bar. This is a Blue Point oyster, local from Long Island. Grabbing something from the food market. On the fresh seafood side, salmon is number one by far. And getting in a few sets of tennis on the station's fourth floor. It's fun. <laughs> Doesn't it look like fun? Just knowing that so many people just walk down, just below us, trying to catch trains and the hustle and bustle. What's up, guys? 
Ten blocks away on the west side of Manhattan, at New York's other great transport hub, Penn Station, terminal manager Steve Terraciano is anticipating a much busier evening than usual. New York Rangers ice hockey team are playing the Arizona Coyotes at Madison Square Garden, which is directly above the station. So we'll have the rush hour, we'll have people heading home from the city, but at the same time, we're also gonna have crowds coming in for the hockey game tonight. Out on the tracks, drivers Neil Bicar and Nick Fisito are ensuring there are enough trains to go round. They're making an express delivery, an empty passenger train for Penn Station. Our equipment, non-passenger trains, have the same tight schedule that our passenger trains do. Where if this train's not back where it has to be at a specific time, it's going to impact our passenger trains leaving on time. And during our uh, rush hour, it's very important to have these trains where they need to be. After morning rush hour, some trains are taken out of service. But as evening peak approaches, they need to be back at Penn ready to roll again. Coming up to our hillside support facility, a lot of equipment trains will be coming out of here. And all of these trains will be making their way to Penn Station for the PM rush hour tonight. A Grand Central, the pace is also picking up. Where are you going? Right. The next available train is a 335, track 103. 103 is downstairs. You're welcome. But not all inquiries at the information booth are about the timetable. You want to know what the most frequent asked question is? Is the staircase in Grand Central Terminal in the movie Untouchables? They ask us that every day. And when we tell them it was filmed in Chicago, they never believe us. Back out on the tracks, Nick and Neil have Manhattan in their sights. I've seen it a lot, but it's still a beautiful sight every time you see it. But the clock is still ticking. This is the East River Tunnels. Right under the water, right into Manhattan to Penn Station. This train will probably go out in 30 to 40 minutes by the time it gets down to the yard and the crew sets it up for eastbound. Nick and Neil's empty passenger train is now received by Lamel Armour and his team at Penn's West Side Yard. They have to prep it ready for service and with rush hour fast approaching, the pressure is on. So this is a packed train for rush hour service, carrying over maybe 2,000, 3,000 people both ways, you know, three or four times. So we want to make sure that when it's leaving time that this train is ready to go. We are working in real time, so everything in here has to make service. So if one of these trains don't leave for whatever reason, it backs everything up. It's like a domino effect. At Grand Central, the countdown has begun. It's less than half an hour before rush hour. And police officer Ali Schmidt and sidekick Mac are making sure the trains are safe to go. Come on, heel. He's all excited. He sees the train, he wants to get on it and, and work his nose and see if there's anything um, suspicious on the trains. So look at him, he loves to go to work. Come on, let's go. Come here, come on. Let's go. Mac, come. Mac is highly trained to search for explosives. Good boy. Check up. Good boy. Yes, a good boy. And he did not indicate, so that's a good thing. Vital safety checks are also being carried out at West Side Yard. Road car inspector Pedro Perez walks the length of the train to test the parking brakes in all 12 cars. That's applied. Now I'm going to release it. That's released. With the parking brakes released, Lamel and his team check each of the car's other braking mechanisms. You see that little space inside? That's the tread brake unit. 
that thing is off right now, it's released. Once he goes back to applied, that tread brake unit closed back on the wheel. So we have to make sure every brake releases and applies correctly. You don't want a runaway train. <laughs> no, we don't want that. that. That won't be good. Emergency equipment. The train breaks down in route. Every day we check, make sure all the components are here, platform. OK. And uh, fire extinguishers, check. And when Pedro finally finishes his detailed safety inspection... It's working. It's good to go. There's a quick sound check. I test the horn. Yep, yep, my horn is good. Nine miles east at Jamaica Station, the afternoon peak has started. As of right now, we're in good shape. We're ready to roll. And tonight, New York has big game fever. Let's go, Rangers. Let's go, Rangers. Let's go, Rangers. Right, yeah. At Penn, too, with thousands of evening commuters and hockey fans expected, customer ambassador Ashley is limbering up for the big game. We're going to get a lot of people coming out from Long Island, so you have to be able to move. That's why I'm always moving, looking around, moving like this, like this, because people are running from this way, running from that way, running from this way, running from that way, and I'm dead smack in the middle. New York is America's most densely populated city. Half the size of London with a matching 8 million residents, its transport systems are on the front line every day. New York, New York. It's so nice, they named the city twice. New York's Friday Russia is underway. And Long Island's main hub, Jamaica Station, is beginning to feel the effects as over 150,000 passengers start to pass through. We want to go into this PM rush hour uh, full steam ahead with no issues um, and take it all the way through. How's it going, gentlemen? Hey, guys. How's it going? So far, we're looking good today. Uh, on or close everywhere. Oh, great. So. Things are looking good. Cool. You know, something minor could cause ripples. We need to watch out, so we try to be as prepared and as proactive as possible. In Manhattan, trains are now leaving and arriving every two seconds. And at the Western world's busiest commuter hub, Penn Station, it's full on. This is where it is. So right now, this is a Friday, so this is actually the peak of rush hour around like 5.30. This is, everybody's going home or going out, so the, everybody's here. Or coming in from different states or wherever they're coming from, this is where it is. But it's not just the Friday commute they are having to deal with. Let's go, Rangers! All right! <laughs> Thousands of ice hockey fans are also flooding in for tonight's big game. Right above us sits Madison Square Garden. When there are big games, big events at the garden, you will see people coming in in droves, dressed in their, in their team's colors. Whether it's a concert, it's a sporting event, this really is where it all happens. So there's a lot going on upstairs. Behind the scenes in the control room, I still have to pay attention. When I'm not paying attention, I still have to pay attention. 2061 got to go down to the west side. The fact there's a wiper on the west end. On the west end. There's a problem. Yeah, all right, 2061 has got to go down. It's got an effective wiper on the west end. It sounds like a small one. 2061. All right, thanks, bud. But even a broken windscreen wiper can have big consequences. The fact the wiper on the west end, it's got to get looked at. It's got to get looked at by uh, our main of equipment in Westside Yard. So they, you know, once we get direction to send it down, it's gotta go down. That means for me, I have to find a new train. I gotta find a new piece of equipment.
front of house, hundreds of thousands of people are crossing the concourse. Three, two, Babylon. Change at Babylon for the train to Batchua, now boarding track 21. Oh, track 21, one more. Standing still is not a good option. <laughs> You're gonna get knocked down. You're gonna get ran over. Excuse me, sorry. Commuters rushing to platforms are coming up against fans arriving for the hockey. There's a lot of hustle and bustle going throughout the station now, and it's challenging to figure out the logistics of customer flow. Should we have an issue, we've got to figure out how we're going to keep the place up and running. They're running to the track, and you're standing in their way. They don't see you. They just see their track. Across Manhattan, Grand Central is having it easier tonight, as they only have commuters to deal with. Even so, it's still non-stop for the people who work there. Seven hundred and fifty thousand people come here a day. They say. Oh, you're yeah. Forty-six, forty-seven. You're welcome. You can, you can walk over there if you want. We communicate at the window in the information booth about maybe about thirty-five hundred. Now, if there's a service disruption, you're talking about five thousand. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's it. And it's a lot of talking. At Penn, with fans now at the game and commuters on their way home, they've got through a tricky evening. The best thing about this station is just, it's Penn Station, it's alive, it is always moving. You know, they say the city never sleeps, Penn Station never sleeps. New York, New York, where tomorrow they'll wake up and make a brand new start of it. We run 24-7, 365, and it's, it's always something new here. You know, that's what I like. It keeps us sharp. 